Hello and welcome back. And this is a Feedback Sports Ultralight Bike Stand. And in today's video, we're gonna do something pretty cool with it. Now, a review video is actually going to come about this particular product, because I actually think it's really good. However, I'm struggling to find partners to do that video with. And so this is gonna be a little bit out of sequence. Nevertheless, um, what we're gonna do here today is change the color. As you can see on the screen behind me, Park Tools has the infamous Park Tool Blue. Pedro's had the yellow. Um, there are other uh, bike stands that have gone with their other color schemes. Feedback Sports is known for being red. And while it is a really nice anodizing and they had some stickers on here, uh, which I've already removed, you may not necessarily like the red. And so I am going to match this bike stand with my bike pump over here. We have the Lazain bike pump that I have had for years and years, which I really quite like. I love the natural handle in combination with the sort of stainless steel and natural uh, materials. However, this red stand does not totally fit in with that, but it appears to be an anodized finish. So what we are going to attempt to do is not only strip the anodizing off this stand, uh, we are going to try to actually make it fully chrome or polish, I should say, just like the bike pump to match it so that all my kit is matching. So where do we begin? Well, we're going to start doing a full disassembly of this bike stand. So let's get into it. So we are going to start by removing this head assembly here. And we're gonna do that by unscrewing this handle. This is normally how you would adjust um, the actual um, clamp mechanism but we're gonna keep going and it's gonna be a bit firm. I've had this off already and the handle's gonna pop right off. You see it's fully threaded. This is actually really um, nice to see. It's a full cast metal piece. Um, that's part of the, one of the reasons why I really like this stand is it has a lot of uh, real metal components to it, not a whole lot of plastic. Not that plastic is inherently a bad thing, but it's nice to see full metal construction. At this point, this will slide right out. And we can begin to remove, let's undo this clamp and that clamp. This will telescope out. We're gonna need a four millimeter Allen key or Allen wrench, I should say. And that is going to, there's a clamp here. Undo this four millimeter. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just take it right out we can store the hardware off to the side. And from here, we can now lift this whole assembly out. All right, so now that we have this here, you can see I actually started to work on it already, but there is a uh, white plastic collar at the end and that we need to remove to get this slide mechanism off. And then later we will remove the plastic up here so that when we go to strip down the anodizing that we have all of this out of the way. And the technique that I'm going to do is making sure that we have the uh, quick release style clamp open. I'm just gonna actually tap it like this. And off it comes. We can see that there's a two piece plastic insert on the middle here. Now let's see if we can tuck that back in. There it goes. So now we have the clamp off as the plastic rolls away. And here, this is interesting. So I can see there's a single screw going in this way. There's gonna be a screw going that way, but then we have this black cover on Let's go ahead and remove the screw. So with the screw on the back here loosened, we can actually just go ahead and remove this whole assembly here, which leaves us with the tube. Now I would like to remove the end cap here. However, that one might need to be knocked out from the inside. 
I might use a, a, a different technique, one second. All right, so <laughs> just have a handy dandy broom here. Let's see if I can knock it out. There we go. Simple enough. Cool, all right, that part's done. Moving on. All right, so turning our attention to the base, we can see that there is a clamp over the mechanism here. These legs are held in, oh, now they're held in with what appears to be rivets. That might be a bit tricky to manage. Do these feet come off? Let's see. Well, I can work on that later. The legs here are just with a Phillips, a very large Phillips, and a nut. Let's see. That can probably stay where it is, but it may need to be removed at a later point. And more Phillips on the bottom. So let's just start taking Phillips off, see where that gets us. off. I feel like I'm channeling my inner Seth bike hacks here. And this just can pull off the end. You can see that the nuts are actually just sitting on the inside here. They just sit in there and we can slide this guide tube thing off. I'm not totally sure this is needed to be honest with you. All right, so keep this all separate. Let's see here. Now we can come in and start. Oh, actually this tube is going to want to come out for us. So there we go. Got a second tube. This will be Easy enough to anodize and strip down. Now let's get these legs off. I may need to get a adjustable wrench to grab onto the nuts here. All right, one sec. So let it be known that these channel locks are not the right tool for this job but you can see here that there's a nut on the back side so i'm just going to simply grab onto it to stop it from turning and we're going to undo the phillips head on this side there we go nut is off and hardware's out so now we can remove this leg so I think there's kind of a good lesson here is that if you are a company, I can appreciate the uh, desire to have a corporate color so that it's identifiable. However, I also think it's equally as important to have options for customers. And one thing that I really like about Lazign that designed this uh, pump here is that they have a lot of pumps that are available in this polished finish. They also have products that are available in like a matte black finish. And, uh, and I think that that gives customers flexibility in terms of, you know, finding the color aesthetic, you know, to state the obvious in the mountain bike industry, there are a lot of people who like to match uh, the colors of their things and spend a lot of time and money doing so. And uh, I think it's interesting how um, we don't see sometimes those same options for some of the other shop essentials. And there we have it. So now that's the top collar off.
better the prep work, the better the results. I, I'm guilty myself of wanting to rush through prep work and just get to the you know big fun parts of any project, but sometimes you just have to really slow down, maybe even like you know do a bit and then walk away intentionally so that you can ensure that you've done a good job to get the uh, the result that you're after. And uh, that's what I'm trying to do here. So I'm trying to do the best I can to mask off the um, underside and around this arm here so that I don't end up stripping off more anodizing than I'd like. But this is what we have here. So there's um, some painter's tape on both sides. We've tried to cover this uh, end bit as best we can and um, it's all protected. Now, this will end up getting polished, which, do you know what, I'm reasonably okay with. And then, I haven't done it yet on this one, but if we take a look over here, I feel like this is the baking show, and this is the one that's already done. Um, you can see that I was not able to remove the rubber end bits. Uh, how they're held in there, I don't know, but I suspect it's with an adhesive. So what I've done is I've flipped the rubber um, sections just inside out. I'm covering them with painter's tape so that through the anodizing stripping process that they don't get uh, eaten and dissolved. And then I'll just flip them back after I'm done the polishing because um, you know this end bit will be covered anyway. So I can come in here, I can polish it as best I can and then, um, and then go from there. So yeah, it's a simple-ish solution. Not ideal, not what I would have preferred. I would have preferred to have had them totally removed, but um, if I'm not able to do that, then this is the next best solution. All right, so here's my plan. I have some Easy Off Oven Cleaner, which is really alkalytic, and in my experience has been able to strip um, anodizing, although this may take a few different coats. So this is gonna be kind of like a day long project. Um, with that, we have some hand protection and we have some respiratory protection. Um, maybe not the strongest quality, but it's going to uh, help reduce the probability of any sort of like large droplets from entraining into the airway. So I'm gonna give this a shake and see where this gets us. There we go. So we're gonna leave that to sit for a couple hours and see where that gets us. In the meanwhile, we will go collect our uh, polishing equipment. You can see here, there's already some red coming off. So this is off to a good start. All right, so our next step is to use this polishing machine. And we have a couple different compounds. So we're gonna use a medium grit and then a finer grit and we are going to uh, take the material from this um, sort of raw aluminum and we're gonna bring it into this polish uh, as you see here. So let's get at it. And here it is. This is the completed project. You can see that it came out with a nice high polish finish, almost a chrome-like finish, which I think really plays off well against the black components, as well as the cast aluminum clamps. Personally speaking, I think it kind of has a chrome stormtrooper kind of look to it, which I wasn't expecting, but I think it looks really nice. 
Of course, again, the point of that being that I wanted to pair it with the Polish Lazine floor pump here, um, simply just because I really like this floor pump and I love the natural wood with the high polish. And it's nice that now other of my shop essentials, such as the pump or the stand, are now sort of all paired together. As you may have noticed, I did choose to omit the plastic spacer at the bottom, and that simply serves the purpose of preventing the legs from overextending. And I can go ahead and demonstrate what that looks like now. So if we lower this back down into its sort of stow position, and then we undo this clamp here. If we were starting here, and it's like folded up in compact position. Of course, I don't have this locked down. What we can do is we can extend the legs down. However, you do run the risk of overextending and locking the legs here, such as if we were to pick up the actual stand. And if you were to lock this down, there's a lot of force being placed on these legs and these joints right now. This is not the way it's supposed to be set up, which is why there's that black plastic space that sits in the bottom. However, if you were to simply just unlock the stand, let it assume its own weight in this position, then lock it, you're good to go. So I'll repeat, if you're setting up the stand and you want to omit that plastic spacer, just let it assume its own weight first, lock, and then you can come in and extend and set up the actual stand for your working station here. So I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Of course, if you found this at all interesting or entertaining, please consider sticking around because we are going to get this VBAC Sports Ultralight stand in the hands of a professional bike shop mechanic that is gonna walk through the features and benefits of this particular product. So I think that'll be worth watching for in the future. Again, thank you very much. I sincerely appreciate it and you take care. Bye for now.